Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of a series on how to design a Eurorack module. We will recreate the rimshot voice of the Roland TR909 as a Eurorack module, analyze the design, prototype it on a breadboard, enter the design into KiCad schematic editor, design a printed circuit board, source the components and finally build and test the prototype. We have a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get started. The circuit consists of three bandpass filters that when triggered will produce an impulse on the output, a sine wave of the center frequency that decays over time. The outputs are mixed together, clipped with a pair of diodes and further shaped with a fixed envelope generator and VCA. The final stage is a high pass filter. As you probably already are aware of, the original design made in the early 80s using domestic Japanese components have been redesigned with more modern components already, and a complete schematic diagram is available on Hex Inverter's website. There is also the 1990 project with a similar circuit diagram to look at, so basically all the heavy lifting have already been done by them. But let's talk a little about breadboards. There are different price levels for breadboards, starting with the cheap ones around 10 euros up to 100 euros for the most expensive ones, for example from uh, 3M. This one is one of the cheap ones. It has plus and minus marking, which is good. And there are different sizes available, which is great if you want to breadboard something small. However, on this type the quality of the connections are really bad. So for example if you are using components with thin leads, you might uh, run into problems. This is a decent breadboard that isn't super expensive. The quality of the plastic and the connectors are much better than the cheap one. But you will need to bridge the power rails together with some wire since left and right side are isolated. The last one is a good one that I have bought second hand. It's definitely worthwhile to look for breadboards in the used market. If they are from a good brand and still look okay, they are probably almost as good as new. The YouTuber Ben Eater have a great video on breadboard quality, if you want to know more. But enough talking, let's put the circuit on breadboard. Okay, so I have connected everything on the breadboard and tested it a bit and uh, messed around a little bit with the circuit. And uh, what I've done is that I have uh, added two pots to, uh, to the bandpass filters. The first one still has the 2.2k resistor, but the other ones have uh, 5k uh, pots on, uh, instead of the 2k uh, resistors. Alright, so I have dialed in something that I think is pretty close to, uh, to what um, 909 uh, Rimshot sounds like, uh, and it uh, sounds like this. And uh, if we compare it to uh, the 909 Rimshot uh, from a sample pack, it sounds like this.
All right, so you can hear that it's a little bit uh, different, but uh, not so much. It's quite sim quite uh, close to the real thing. All right, so um, <clears throat> what does these pots do then? If I um, start turning on one here, um, you can hear that it's uh, uh, changing the pitch a bit. And we can change the other one. So, um, so you can hear that it's uh, quite, you can dial in a lot of different sounds or uh, change the, the, the pitch quite a lot. So, uh, so I think I will uh, leave it like this uh, with two pots. And uh, I will probably add uh, uh, so another uh, um, a button like this one. Uh, I will add this add a circuit for that, so it's possible to trigger it uh, manually as well. Uh, one thing that I found out that was quite important what was the value of the capacitor on the trigger input. Uh, there are three different values that uh, occur in in the schematic diagrams. Uh, 10 nanofarad, 15 nanofarad, and 18 nanofarad, and 18 is the value that is used by uh, by Roland in the 909, the TR909. And uh, so I, I think that it actually sounds uh, the best, so I, I will choose that. And uh, 18 nanofarad is a quite a difficult uh, value to get hold of, so you can combine 15 uh, nanofarad in parallel with 3.3 nanofarad and then you get uh, something that is close to uh, 18. All right, so uh, now I think I know how to what the uh, schematic uh, will look like, so we will move on to that. Okay, so let's look at the results from the breadboarding session here. And as I mentioned, I will use uh, 18 nanofarad on the input here. And I will uh, add a pot with uh, 100 ohm for these two bandpass filters. This one will still keep the, the fixed uh, resistor. And I will add some kind of circuit for, uh, for the cherry key on the front panel as well. All right, that's it for today. In the next episode, we will draw the schematic diagram into KiCad schematic editor. Until then, take care. And I'll see you soon.